today on Flipping Science we're going to be doing an example back titration question. Um, sometimes when you want to find the amount of something, you can't find it directly, you have to use a backwards route. So that's what we're going to look at today. So we're going to look at an example from an old exam that I've found. So here's the question and I've highlighted some of the important information on it. So it says, compounds of chlorine are present in swimming pool water. Credit will be used uh, given for the correct use of significant figures in part A. So we need to make sure we use the right number of significant figures. This whole bit that we're looking at is part A. Okay. So, an excess quantity of standard silver nitrate solution was added to a sample of swimming pool water. This results in the removal of all the chloride ions by precipitation. I've highlighted the silver nitrate that we're starting with, and I've also had a look at, uh, highlighted that it, there's an equation here that we need to worry about. Um, an excess of silver is titrated against KSCN solution, and we've got the equation there. Red colour indicates the endpoint. Then we've got our important numbers down here. So one analysis, 25 mils, 0.0116 molar silver nitrate solution was added to a 50 mil sample of swimming pool water. Then 7.35 mils of 0.0143 mol uh, KSCN solution was added to produce the red colour. So I've got two sets of numbers and these are going to be important. The important thing that I'm looking at here is 25 mils of 0.0116 molar solution. So we started with this amount, we added it to um, 50 mils. Okay. So all the chloride ions would react with the silver in there and produce silver chloride. So there'd be some silver ions left over, and that's what we're looking for in this one. So I started with a number of moles of silver ions over here. I got rid of some of it because it reacted with the chlorine, and I'm figuring out how much reacted with it by doing this second titrate, well, doing the second reaction down here. So this is where we're titrating. This is our number of moles, well we can calculate a number of moles of KSCN solution here that reacted with the silver ions. So I've got a bit of an idea in my head what I'm looking for. Now we'll have a look at the question. Okay, so the question is broken up into several sections. Calculate the number of moles of silver ions in 25 mils of 0.0116 mole per litre silver nitrate solution. So again, I'll just underline the important things. So, in silver nitrate solution, if we chuck that in water, we're going to get a one-to-one -one ratio between the silver and the nitrate, so it's just going to be a straight-out equation. We're going to start with C equals L and V, which is our parent equation. We're looking for a number of moles, so a number of moles of silver ions is going to be equal to C times V. Our concentration is 0 0.0116 mole per litre. My volume is 25 mils, which is 0.025 litres. I'm going to grab my calculator and pop that in. So 0.0116 times 0.025. The answer I get is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 4. My issue is my least number of significant figures is what I have to work with. Now, where I put 0.025 over here, there's actually an extra couple of zeros on the top that I didn't write down. So that's to four significant figures down here, this is to three. So I need to go to three significant figures in my answer. So 2.90 times 10 to the minus four, um, that gives us the precision that we need. Okay, and that's going to be moles. Next part of the question, calculate the number of moles of SCN minus ions that reacted in the titration at step two. So this is where I'm going to take this information down here. Okay, so my number of moles of SCN minus, now I've got a concentration again, 0.0143, and I've got a volume, 0.00, because it's 7.35, 00.735 mils. I'm going to pop that in my calculator. So 0 0.0143 times 0 0.00735, and I get 1.05, Three significant figures times 10 to the minus 4 moles. Okay, step three, pull this off, calculate the number of moles of silver ions and hence the number of moles of chloride ions in the original sample of swimming pool water. What we have is we have a big number here and a smaller number here, and we need to look at our ratios to figure out what the ratio of reactants are. I'm going to put that up there a little bit so we can have a look at this one. If we look at both of our equations, it's one to one. So one mole of silver ions will react with one mole of SCN minus ions. So one to one ratio all the way through. It's also a one to one ratio with silver ions and chloride ions to make silver chloride. So that's important. My first step is going to look at the 
ratio of silver ions to SCN minus ions. So ratio AG plus SCN minus equals one to one. Right? So my number of moles of AG plus that reacted is going to be the same as the number of moles of SCN minus which is what we got up here, 1.05 times 10 to the minus 4. Right. What we need to do is subtract this number of moles of silver away from our original number of moles that we started with. So I'm going to do NAG plus excess equals 2.90 times 10 to the minus 4 minus 1.05 times 10 to the minus 4. So 2.98 minus 4 minus answer. So I get 1.85 times 10 to the minus 4 mole. Okay. This is the number of moles of excess silver that reacted in the end. Now from here I can figure out how many moles of uh, chloride ions that I started with. So, to answer part 3 we need to look at the ratio between the Ag plus ion and the SCN minus ion. If we go back to our equations at the start we find it's a 1 to 1 ratio. Now what we need to do is figure out how much well, we know how much uh, reacted here because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. What we need to figure out is how this relates back to how much we started with back here. So I had this amount of silver ions to start with. This amount was left over. Well, this amount was in excess, I should say. So we need to subtract from the big number the small number. Because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, it's a simple subtraction. So, all right, number of moles of Ag plus that reacted it's going to be equal to my big number, take my small number. So 2.90, subtract from that 1.05 times 10 to the minus 4. If I put that in my calculator, so 2.90 times 10 to the minus 4. Put that in right. 2.9 minus 4. And I get 1.8. 5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of silver ions that reacted. Then from there I need to go back and figure out how many moles that is that reacted with the chloride. Okay, if I look, it's a 1 to 1 ratio. So therefore my number of moles, so ratio Ag plus Cl minus equals 1 to 1. So therefore, my number of moles of chloride ions is going to be exactly the same as this. So it's 1.85 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. Okay? So, to bring it back, so that we have a decent idea of what we've figured out by answering those questions. We figured out the number of moles of silver ions that we started with. Those silver ions reacted with, some, with all of this chloride and there was some silver left over. That silver that was left over, we reacted down here, and we figured out exactly the number of moles of this leftover silver that reacted down here. If we subtract from the total number of moles of silver that we started from, the moles that reacted in excess, that gives us our number of moles of chloride ions because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. Now, there's one more part to the question, which is this bit here. Calculate the concentration of chloride ions in micrograms per milliliter in the original sample of swimming pool water. So, we have our number of moles of chloride ions. That came from 50 mils of water that was being sampled. So, what we need to do is make an equation and then do some calculations to figure out what the concentration is in this unit, micrograms per milliliter. So, to start with, we're finding a concentration. Concentration is number on volume. Problem is, we're looking for mass here, micrograms. So we're going to have to times the number of moles by the molar mass and divide that by the volume to get us into the concentration unit that we need. So uh, N equals M on M. So our number of moles equals mass on molar mass. 
So mass equals n times mole mass, and that's what we're going to use here. Okay? I'm going to shove in the numbers that I have. So from the previous question, 1.85 times 10 to the minus 4. 5 times 10 to the minus 4. I'm going to multiply that by the molar mass of chlorine, which is 35.45. I'm going to divide that by, now the unit here is in milliliters, so if I go back to the question, it was 50 milliliters that we used, so I'm just going to divide that by 50. All right? Pop that in my calculator. So I've got 1.85 times 10 to the minus 4 times by 35.45, and then I'm going to divide that by 50. I get 1.31 1 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, my problem is this is in grams per milliliter. Because the unit up here is, this is uh, putting it into grams. So I need to turn it into micrograms. In the, at the start of an exam, you'll be given a um, SI prefix and symbol so on sheet that's attached. It's on the back of the periodic table. So what you need to do here is see that micro means times 10 to the minus 6. So this is in grams. What I need to do here is take this 1.31 times 10 to the minus 4 and I need to time or divide that by times 10 to the minus 6. So I'm going to put that in my calculator, divide that by 10, xy minus 6, and I get 131 micrograms per milliliter. Alright, so that's that question. That's the example back titration. That's the end of flipping science for today. I hope that wasn't too confusing. See ya.